Our next guest had a, a, a legislative victory in Richmond. And, uh, and you know, uh, many of you, especially the farmers, <coughs> and uh, uh, for many of you who don't, uh, she came all the way down here from Fauquier County. Did I say that right? Fauquier. Fauquier <laughs> County. And that's pretty far. I mean, you know, that's very far. So she drove uh, pretty far to come down here and tell us her story. Um, and try to inspire us to show that there is a, there is ability uh, for victory in, in all these fights. So uh, I present to you Martha Benet. Thank you so much. It is such an incredible honor to be here in Russell County. Um, from what I've seen, this is the land of the free. I mean, I have never seen more patriotic people in a room before. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I also want to thank Dwayne, because this has been an extraordinary event. And without his hard work and creativity and ability to breathe all of this energy, positive energy, into having a positive impact on providing more opportunity for family farmers in Virginia, we wouldn't be here tonight. So um, another round of applause for Dwayne. <laughs> you know, I, I want to start by speaking uh, to something that Joel Salatin, who's my, my, my hero in so many ways, um, spoke about. Uh, you know, he spoke of uh, the Virginia Steel. And the Virginia seal is an image of virtue, right? She's barefoot, she has her hand on a spear, and she has her bare foot on the neck of tyranny. And that image is so powerful, right? I mean, I mean, it just it speaks to, as Virginians and as Americans, how much we value freedom and liberty. And yet, and yet, we're seeing our freedom diminished on a regular basis. You know, property rights, are one of our most fundamental freedoms. And George Washington said, property rights and freedom are inseparable. Farming is a profession of hope that relies on land, dirt, soil. It also relies on mother nature. But property rights and farming go hand in hand. And yet, we're seeing an incredible amount of tyrannical overreach on our family farms. It's coming from the, on the county level by requiring regulations and restrictions, setback requirements, full-blown hearings to statewide regulations, and of course, on a federal level, with all types of EPA restrictions that are uh, really suffocating the ability to truly have freedom on our farmland today. I want to start by telling you a little bit about myself so you have an idea of my background. I grew up in Mount Vernon, Virginia. I'm the youngest of three girls. Uh, I don't come from a farming family by any means. My mom and my dad uh, had these uh, kitchen gardens in the backyard. And I enjoyed working in them so much. And the vegetables were so good. And uh, we were told growing up that our, our land, where our, where our home was, where I grew up, was a, a part of George Washington's vast farmland. And my mom would always tell us that, you know, the vegetables were so good, the tomatoes were so wonderful because of George Washington's paint. And so, you know, from there really grew a great sense of appreciation and respect and love for our rich agricultural heritage in Virginia, and I very much wanted to be a part of that dream. And I grew up in a family where my mom and my dad taught us that if we worked really hard, and we were dedicated and, and really devoted ourselves and worked hard, we're willing to get dirty and work hard, we could be anything we wanted in life. And yet, I never dreamed in a million years <coughs> that I would put my heart, my treasure, my dedication into farming on a family farm, and I would encounter miles and miles of regulation and red tape. About six years ago, my dream became reality. My family purchased a farm, uh, 64 acres in, in Fauquier County, a rural agricultural community, and we uh, were so excited about fulfilling this dream to have a family farm. And uh, we immediately had to put significant um, work into the property. It hadn't been farmed in some time. We had to, of course, fence off 64 acres. We had to put in uh, wells. We had to put in electric. 
We had to create the infrastructure so we could actually start farming because there wasn't anything there that would enable us to engage in the type of family farm agriculture that, that we wanted to do. So after we had put in all of that work, we started actively farming. We have over 285 animals. We produce beyond organic vegetables. Uh, we have an apiary, we produce raw honey, and we also produce chicken, duck, turkey, and even emu eggs. And if anybody has seen an emu egg, there are these big, green, shiny, sparkly eggs. They're smaller than ostrich eggs. And uh, let's just say that one emu egg is equal to 10 to 12 chicken eggs. So nobody comes to the farm and orders a dozen emu eggs. You have to have a really, really big family or a party of some kind. So in any event, um, to my dismay, uh, I, had a, well, I had a fabulous little birthday party for my best friend's daughter. There were eight 10-year-old little girls at my farm in January. So the children weren't even outside because the weather didn't permit it. It actually snowed earlier in the week. And uh, the kids were inside. They had cake. They had uh, played with baby animals. They opened up presents. So really horrible stuff, right? <laughs> on private property, on rural agriculturally zoned farmland. And to my dismay, I received a zoning violation that threatened my family with up to $15,000 a day in violations, $5,000 per violation for having a birthday party without a site plan, special exception permit, an administrative permit, full-blown hearings, and fees. They also found me in violation for um, advertising for pumpkin carvings in my pumpkin patch and for engaging in other um, agritourism activities on my farm and for selling farm products on my 64 acre rural, rural agricultural farm in a rural agricultural county in a right to farm state. And you know, at that point I was devastated. I mean, I, my, my heart was broken. I couldn't believe this was happening. I mean, how could this be that on farmlands in a rural agricultural that I would be found in violation? And at that point, uh, I was devastated. My family appealed the decision to the Board of Zoning Appeals Anybody here from Russell County Board of Zoning? <laughs> Board of Zoning Appeals for Zoning? All right. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just say that in Fauquier County in the past 25 years, how many times do you think a zoning decision violation has ever been overturned by the BCA? No. There was one time when there was, well, there was one time when there was some sort of techni technicality that it was forced to be, you know, kicked out or what have you. But, um, so I was forced to shut down when I was in pool on harvest. And I, I was dismayed and heartbroken because I, I couldn't imagine we had put all of our hearts, uh, our love, our passion into creating this farming, uh, um, this, this family farm and fulfilling this dream. And yet everywhere I turned, there was one obstacle, one hurdle after the other. And it seemed as though there was nothing I could do about it. So from there really grew um, this grassroots, I'm going to borrow the word tsunami, tsunami, and it would not have been possible without Joel Salatin, Vicva, Bernadette Barber, and so many countless Virginians from all over the Commonwealth. And guess what? It turns out, now hold on, you're not going to believe this, but it turns out the Democrats eat food too. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but Democrats do eat food. So what started off as a conservative movement, right? I mean, we only had conservative legislators pushing this legislation, as you'll recall. Ended up creating a statewide conversation, a statewide awareness. And before we knew it, we had thousands of signatures on petitions. We had people writing letters from every corner of the state. They were making phone calls, talking to their legislators, taking time away from their families, driving five hours or more with their children in tow, coming to testify in Richmond. We even had a pitchfork protest in Fauquier County. All of this coming together took two years. A bill was introduced in the first general assembly in 2013, and it failed. It flew through the general assembly house, but it failed on the steps of the uh, Senate Act Committee. Between then and the last General Assembly session, we started building coalitions. Coalitions with every facet, every walk of life. Because again, Democrats do eat food. And we realized that we may not agree on anything else, but we do agree on having access to, to local, healthy, small family farm produced food. 
and we believed in family farmers being able to be viable and make ends meet on the land. And so before we knew it, we had property rights activists, economic freedom activists, liberty-minded individuals from every corner of the state want to be engaged and get involved, and we were able to create bipartisan legislation. Uh, the bill passed, and uh, our 72nd governor signed it into law on July 1st of this year. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless you.